Mimikyu always trick rooms here. Nothing we can do about that, except flinch it, I guess. <laughs> wait, wait. Nice, nice, nice. Do it again. Bro! <laughs> yes! Let's go! Happy Monday, everyone. How are we all doing today? How's everybody, how's the start of everybody's week? Who's ready to immediately jump into this trainer rival fight thing? Trainer May rival fight. Who's ready? Who's ready? I'm ready because I've done the calcs. I don't have a perfect answer, but I have an answer that I've been stewing on for a long time. So we're just going to do it. At some point, you just got to do it and let the cards lie where they may. So that's what we're going to do. So I, I have this mostly cooked up. Um... It's it's uh it's pretty pretty wild. I'm pretty proud of these strats actually. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Do you guys want to know what's going on or do you want to be pleasantly surprised as the battle starts? How are we feeling? You want me to walk through sh or do you want me to explain it as we go? Do it live. All right. Um quick question then. I only I only have but one question for chat. Um I don't know. Maybe maybe I shouldn't listen to chat at all. But my question is how liberal can I be with using rare candies at this point? I feel like for the most part if rare candies help me out with some rolls, I feel like I should go for it. I got four rare candies and it's not like we're getting evolutions anymore with rare candies. Big points of candies are pyre tag, but I think you're fine with that. Maxi and TL yeah, so I kind of want to use two candies here to help me with some rolls that I will explain. I think that's good. Um, and I'll also need to use one heart scale, but heart scales are a little more precious than rare candies, IMHO, because heart scales can be huge at the end of the game. Um, though we do get a lot more heart scales as we go. There are five rare candies left after this. Oh yeah. I'm fine with I'm fine with using two rare candies then. I don't I don't really want to wipe here. And if it if it tips the odds in my favor with a few more percentages, I think I'm fine with that. All right. So we have to use a heart scale here, but this should be fine. We're going to use a heart scale to maximize McLaughlin's defense so that Garchomp never sees a kill with Earthquake so that on turn one, he's going to set up Stealth Rocks. Kind of sucks, but it actually makes McLaughlin like pretty, pretty powerful all across the board now. So that's good. And we'll probably use... Mega Absol for more magic bounce shenanigans. So I think that that's a good investment long-term. The other thing, the short-term investments that we do need to do is we need to get these guys to 74 because if um, certain things happen, we're in a lot of trouble. There's, there's an argument to be made to not level up this one because it's not super, super mandatory, but I think it's, I still think it's for the best. We are not intentionally sacking anything. It can happen, but it's not going to be intentional if it happens. Are we are we ready to close the predictions? Because it's time to go. You guys don't know. You guys don't know what's going on here. All right. Here we go. We could wipe here. We could wipe here. I'm I'm going to be entirely honest with you folks. We could we could definitely wipe here. All right. The Pokémon I raised won't be beaten by your Pokémon, Mati. Stop saying my name. It's annoying. Let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. All right, May leads with a Garchomp. This Garchomp has a Yachi Berry, which makes it very difficult to kill, especially if you accidentally had to sack your only fairy type. So, this Garchomp also has Stealth Rock. It doesn't see kill, so it will always set up Stealth Rock turn one. So we are going to Mega Evolve McLaughlin, so that McLaughlin Bounces the Stealth Rocks back. And then we're also going to knock off his berry. Let's see it. Thank you for the Stealth Rocks. Now we got Stealth Rocks doing damage. It does. It only really matters in one spot. We just really don't want them on our side. So, okay. We knocked off the berry. Garchomp is at around 50%. So now Garchomp should never go Stealth Rocks now. It should see that we have ma uh, Magic Bounce, so it just won't do that. So now what it's going to want to do is it's going to want to click Earthquake. So we are going to switch to Lagat. 
who is immune, obviously, to Earthquake. And then, because we knocked off the Yachi Berry, now we can use Natural Gift, which off of an Asper Berry is a uh, 80 base power Ice type move. So we just kill that. This is the only way that we could have done this because nothing else is faster than Garchomp, so it always still could have set up Stealth Rocks on the next turn. Originally, I was gonna go Gyarados and then Gamble, but then I had no way to get rid of Stealth Rocks. So that's dead. The only thing that's faster than this is Weavile. So Weavile comes out because Weavile sees the kill. Um, now Weavile, unfortunately, we're not faster than this. It would be really cool if we were, but we ain't. So Weavile's going for the um, Triple Axle. We're going to go to Bath. Bath, even if all three of these crit, this does not go to under 50%, so we're never going to get switched out here. Damn, he hit all three. That's kind of annoying. Um, and unfortunately, none of this damage matters, but we can just first impression and kill this sucker. So this is going to bring out the, um, it should, I actually should have double checked this. I'm, yeah, because this didn't crit anywhere, nothing kills this except the Articuno. So Articuno comes out and takes 25% from the rocks. Now this sees Hurricane, so we go back to Aerodactyl. And I don't care if this confuses, I'd ideally like this to not crit. Okay, perfect. So now this baits um, Freezing Glare. Um, and it sees that we're faster and we two-shot it with Rock Slide. Unfortunately, we don't just kill this with Rock Slide. That would be kind of nice, but we don't. This thing's pretty bulky. Aerodactyl, not that strong. So we're going to switch on the Freezing Glare to McLaughlin, who is immune to Freezing Glare because Freezing Glare is a Psychic-type move. Boom. Now we just Sucker Punch for the kill because we're sassy nature, so we're not actually faster than this. But with the Stealth Rocks, it's a guaranteed kill. Great. Now that brings out the, um, the Machamp. Okay. Machamp has no guard, which sucks. And it has leftovers, so that chip doesn't matter. This is where things get a little scary. Because what we have to do here is this is always going dynamic punch. It always sees the kill with dynamic punch. So we need to go to Meb here, who's immune to that. But this also has knockoff, so we have no item on knockoff. What we really need here is for the knockoff to not crit. I really need this knockoff to not crit. We can Psychic Fangs here. Huge damage, that's great. Knockoff, don't crit, don't crit, don't crit. Perfect, okay, so now this always still goes knockoff. So the reason that we needed to get to level 74 is that if the damage rolls on 73 means that a high roll knockoff could bait Stone Edge on the second turn, but now it's always just going knockoff again. If it had crit, we would have been 50-50 Stone Edge and knockoff. Because it didn't, we can now safely go back to um, Absol and knockoff doesn't get boosted from a Mega Stone, or theoretically it shouldn't. This guy is at right at 52. So this was actually, this was a pretty low roll, but basically, He's gonna get another 6%, so he's gonna be at like 59. And Play Rough from Mega Absol does 69%. So since that didn't crit, we are totally fine here to switch back to McLaughlin. Um, if it had gone 50-50 with Stone Edge, what we would have had to do is just hope that Stone Edge doesn't crit onto McLaughlin because regular Stone Edge doesn't kill. But here, we're, everything's fine. Um, Leftovers heals, that's fine. We're just gonna kill with play rough. Which always hits. Okay. Last turn that matters. Last turn. Last turn here. Um So this is a little tricky. We're at 137. 
Yeah, so this is always going either body press or double iron bash. I low-key kind of need it to go double iron bash onto bath because we need the free switch into Alaska. And I can't go into Meb because double iron bash does too much damage. If it goes thunder punch, where uh, things get a little, or I mean, if it goes, if it goes body press, things go a little sus because I don't think we fall into range of um, our thing activating. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. All right. Double iron bash? No, it went broadly press. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not enough damage actually. So we need the safe switch here into into arc. So now this is going thunder punch. So this kind of yes. me a teensy bit. Um, I think what I have to do is I have to risk crit on. Absol. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this went. I can't go Alaska, and I can't let this take that much damage from Thunder. Or can I? Do I risk crit on this? This does. No, I mean even Hyrule could actually kill this. The issue is that after Absol comes in, it's random move. Yeah. Okay. This is this can get scary. I could not have pre-damaged. No, no, no. I, I could have, but if it I if I had gotten crit by the uh, triple axle, it wouldn't have worked because then I would have gotten switched out. So yeah, this is a little unfortunate. I think what I got to do is roll the dice here on McLaughlin and then roll the dice again on Bath. Yeah, it's really the only way. Okay. We just hope it doesn't thunder punch again. This is this is my only play, really. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That should trigger it. Perfect. Okay. Not the cleanest, but there has to be a little wiggle room here. Okay, we're not out of the woods yet. We can go Alaska. This thing is crazy bulky. So we can only ever two shot this with Flare Blitz. We have a Citrus Berry here on Alaska. The issue is that double Iron Head Bash or double Iron Bash does 71 to 85%. So if the first one crits, we're fine because that activates our Citrus Berry and then we won't die to the next one. The only way that this goes poorly is if the first one doesn't crit and high rolls, but the second one does crit. So what we really need is either the first one to crit, none of them to crit, or if the second one crits, then we have to get low rolls. That's that's basically the only way. If we die here, we're kind of we're kind of super duper fucked. So the only thing I can do is Flare Blitz. The only Pokemon that was better, like that that would have guaranteed this, is Beware but I couldn't use Beware for reasons that I'll explain in a second. Like had I used Beware here, um, there was a 50-50 that I kind of just lose. Ads are over, great. All right, let's do it, let's do it. Just dodge, just dodge that like niche crit roll, okay? Just dodge the niche crit roll here. It's great damage. I think, I think that second crit would have killed us. I really do. But now we win. With the chip, Flare Blitz always kills. So this, using Arcanine, Arcanina here was really important because this Blaziken only sees the kill with close combat now. So that gives me a safe switch back into, um... Oh, so, okay. So had we gone Beware because of Fluffy, it actually would have not killed. Uh, or sorry, if we had gone Beware, which was never dead to crits there from the, the double Iron Bash dude, then 
once Blaziken came out, it would have gone random move between Fluffy and Close Combat because of Fire Blitz, Flare Blitz and Close Combat. And had it gone Flare Blitz when I do exactly what I'm about to do, then it could have killed Bath. But because now it's guaranteed to go Close Combat, we guarantee get the defense drop and the free switch to Gyarados who can never get crit killed. And that never crits either. Defense down, so now Waterfall always kills. Does it have White Herb? Uh, <laughs> good one. Does the Mega Pokemon have White Herb? And so there was always a little bit of wiggle room here because Bao actually never gets crit anyways because this, uh, this Gyarados has Shell Armor. But now we're completely safe. It's probably going to go for um, knockoff. That's fine. Um, I wanted to have a Lumberry here or a Rossberry just in case we got hit by Flare Blitz and got burned. So then Waterfall wouldn't have killed, but now it does. Good game, Blaziken. We did it. Deathless Lily Cove rival. Okay. So we obviously did have to risk a couple crits, um, but that was the best I could get it done. I think had I, I'm, for the last week, I've been kicking myself about this Rabombi death. And man, it's so frustrating. So we had to risk McLaughlin there because it was 50-50 to go double body press or double iron head bash. I wasn't planning that. We did need to risk, there, there were a couple risks there, but... It was the best I could do. But yeah, I'm so pissed about the Rabombi stuff. Because had I had Rabombi, it would have made this so much easier. Because Rabombi can easily come in on Earthquake from Garchomp, kill it. It's faster than Garchomp. Rabombi can probably kill um, the Machamp too. Because it we had Shield Dust, so it can't get confused from Dynamic Punch. So... I'm really kicking myself for that miss. And I think, honestly, had we gone for Draining Kiss, if I had taught it Draining Kiss like I meant to or like I thought about, might have had enough HP to survive that Blastoise's Dark Pole. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And honestly, I think switching it in during the Lantern shenanigans was really stupid. That whole Lantern thing was not my best play. I should have, like, better mapped it out and given at least something a Lumberry instead of Citrus Berries, because, like, ugh, ugh, that was rough. At the end of the day, sometimes you roll the freeze into freeze into burn into burn into freeze or whatever, whatever happened, <laughs> whatever it was. So only so much you can do about it, you know? Am I going to roll Route 122 now? I think so. All right, so what's the new level cap? Oh, it's 76? Ooh, you get a big fat level cap jump. Let's go. What's next? Mount Pyre, I believe, right? After we level up all our friends. Is this the furthest attempt, first attempt ever? I, I feel like probably not. Unless you count Discord demons with no proof. <laughs> uh, people just lying out there? Who would do that? This deserves a main channel video regardless of the outcome. Yeah, you think I'm gonna spend this much time on something and not make a channel video out of it? I won on my first attempt, so fair, fair. Yeah, if I don't win on my first turn, uh, on my first attempt, I'm kind of a piece of shit. Any exciting project outside of Run and Bun? Yeah, I've got, I'm working on something with Wacko. It's our secret project, but don't ask him about it. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that Ape and the the stupid penguin really pop off in the late game. Shall we go get Route 122? Should we go get Dreepy? <laughs> I mean, it's like 10% Dreepy, right? Because I don't have any of the dupes. The alternative is that I can... If I fish, I could get Slowbro, Slowking, Jellicent. Because uh, where's Dreepy on Mount Pyre? Do, 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 do. Dreepy on Mount Pyre... 10%. Well, 15% because of Dracloak. It's one of the best. What, Dreepy? What I'm wondering is if I delay until I get to the higher floors of Mount Pyre and roll that Dreepy first. But I guess it's better to just get this and maybe get Haunch Crow here so that you 
check that dupe off of Mount Pyre exterior. Summit, it's only 5%, but I do have the 20% Absol dupe. Um, all right, so it's Crobat, Noivern, Honchcrow, Ghastly, or the coveted Dreepy. I don't have any of those dupes, unfortunately. How useful has Copperaja been? Um, I think, like, I think he's been fine. He's obvi- I, I haven't used Agron, but I have to imagine he's just a sheer Agron. So it's like, it's not that he's terrible, like, he's come and done decent things, but I'm almost certain that Agron could just do it better and have a lot more utility. So this is Route 122. Why can't we go to Route 123, or can we? Oh, we can. I see, it blocks you off. But we can get an encounter here too. Do people delay this? I could get Froakie Azumarill. I guess there's a chance at Pre-Marina. Usually delay for Pre-Marina chance, but Azumarill. Just I could really use a fairy type. It's only 20% fairy. I don't have access to the grass, no. Just get a Pre-Marina on another route, then come back for Azu. Oh yeah, that's, that's so easy, isn't it, to ensure. Yeah, let's f***ing go, guys. Let's f***ing go. Let's f***ing go. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! Woo! <laughs> it's infiltrator, not clear body, unfortunately. We learned that right, right off the bat. That goes through seafloor. Wait, infiltrator works that way? It goes through Aravale? Oh, you're kidding me. Yeah, we can we can uh, we can switch to to Toga tomorrow next. Yeah. Once we're freed from the infestation. Let's go! Creepy baby. One ball HG. Is this a runner or a bunner? This has got to be a runner, right? Speedy little lady. I think we tried to do Fraser Price for uh, Salazzle. Uh, Shelly Ann doesn't fit. Oh, yeah, it does. All right, Shelly Ann, welcome to the team. I can't believe we just got Dreepy. It's probably going to be the zip code IVs, but that's fine. You can put all scales into this guy. <laughs> Why is everything sassy? Why is that? It's like literally always sassy. Okay, it's at least it's good. Like, does intimidate make it sassy? If I lead in intimidate, is it always sassy? Oh, you're adamant. Great. <laughs> Hopefully, this still kills Tangrowth. Did we even look at this? Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Pop off. Max attack. Cast form. What are these natures, bro? Whatever, it's fine. I can't be too pissy. I guess there's no reason to delay it because I just run out of, I just lose moves, huh? Delay for Draco Meteor. Oh, Draco Meteor 77. Yeah, darts is pretty fire. Draco's also fire. Good point, good point. Wait, is the next level, so I don't get this for Tate and Liza? Or is Tate and Liza 79? Oh, you do. What do I go for on Mount Pyre? What do I see that I like? Kinda like this Mount Pyre Summit. Oh, did somebody say you can repel Manip? Try Summit for Weavile. Yeah, so it'd be 20% Lass, 20% Weavile, 20% Sableye Sol Rock, or Spiritomb, Zorar Gengar. So what do we have? What do we have here? We start with a double between Dez and Luke. Berserker, Meowstic, Arcanine, Smeargle, and Ratatouille. The Dark Ratatouille. Ew. Yeah, okay, this is... I have a feeling things are going to slow down exponentially now, huh? Alright, this isn't the... 
soundest answer to to this, but I guess we're gonna go for it. That's too much damage. No, 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 no. Let's let's keep it out. Keep it, keep it, keep it as is. Oh, God. Don't like. All right. So the plan here is to bait slow kills from Pretzel on both. And we just Earthquake twice. Berserker is slower than Flygon. So we've got the Iron Ball. So Pretzel is totally fine here. Um, spiky shield, although I suppose Earthquake the one-shot Berserker, and then what happens? Well, I guess we'll find out. Alright, Shadow Ball into Pretzel. Earthquake. There's decent damage here. I am calcing spread. Oh yeah, it's gonna be tight. Oh right, it's got the eye of Papa Berry. Okay, then that works out fine. Uh, an Iron Tail into Pretzel. Okay. How much did Miastic take there? Yeah, right. So now we switch switch into Pidge on the Shadow Ball, and we kill Berserker. Uh, maybe I should have bulldozed there. Oh, you know what, though? Isn't this going to do that thing where it actually kills both of them because of the, the glitch where I'm going to kill Berserker and then Meowstic's going to take full damage? So this is actually going to kill Meowstic. This is going to kill both of them. I should have um, planned for that. The alternative is to go Gyarados. Gyarados takes how much from Shadow Ball? 14%. Uh, but then it's a random move from Raticate. I think I do go Pidge here. Um, that gets a little weaselly, though, doesn't it? Ah, uh, but actually, Sucker Punch, it should see... No, it doesn't make any sense. Man, dude, I kind of f***ed up. I should not have pre-damaged Pidge. Intentionally not kill with Bulldoze. No, but then Berserker hits us, and that's too much. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. There's the Shadow Ball and Felix. Earthquake kills them both. Crit, too. The issue. Um. Interesting. So it doesn't because Pidgeotto's still out? So it didn't do double damage there. I mean that everything's according to plan then, but I just I just want to know what happened. AI only has one Pokemon and it's on the left side of the field using a spread move. It will deal da the full okay. If AI only has one Pokemon and it's on, on the right side, it will always take reduced damage from spread moves used by the player. That's interesting. If the player uses a spread move that KOs the right side AI Pokemon, the Pokemon in the left side, which immediately takes damage afterwards, takes full single target damage. No, you guys are wrong. That I, I literally just read exactly what happened. The reason it, it must be because it also hits Felix. So there must be an, like some sort of there must it must not take full damage. I mean, it's not really a bug. It's just a a clarifier on the bug. This is Arcanine. Now we hard dose here. And I think if this crits, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Mm, uh, it's tricky, 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 tricky. This has to go dose. This, I don't know if I Earthquake or if I... Is there any world where I keep Meowstic alive? The Raticate doesn't come in and threaten with Sucker Punch? Like, do I Draco drop the uh, Arcanine? I don't know how I feel about this. I guess we'll see. 
See what happens. Psychic. Okay, flare blitz. Okay, it used up, uses up the fire gem. I think a crit here might might kill Bow. I don't know. Yeah, that would have been really tight, huh? Good thing we have shell armor on this bad boy. 62 to 74% with crit there. And Meowstic did 24 to 29%. So it was, it was up there. Uh, see, now the issue is that I don't think Sucker Punch kills. But, okay, so you no longer have Barry. So what are you doing? So Arcanine is either clicking... Um, that was I used Bulldoze, right? So this is now slower. Arcanine sees that both Bow and Cobra and Kill... So it's gonna extreme speed onto bow. Radicate, the issue is that Radicate could go Sucker Punch into Gera, or it could go Double Edge, and it could do the same thing into Coburn. I, think I need to double switch here and just hope. It's, I think it's random move on both slots. I think the shitty thing here is if the, uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, okay, it's split damage, so that's actually really good. 196. Um, so we can now kill Raticate with the, uh, the Leech Life, or I'm first impression. The question is, what is Arcanine doing here? Can Arcanine see the kill on Beware with Burn Up? Without Fire Gem, it still does. Yeah, so it's going Burn Up here. So that's fine. Um, so all we do is we switch Momo into Gyarados. And we first impression. First impression should have higher... Can it go Sucker Punch here? Does first does Sucker Punch happen before First Impression? First Impression is plus two. Oh no, Sucker Punch is plus one. Okay, 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 we're fine, we're fine. So you into Dose. First Impression into that again. From here, it gets a little fun. Now we got the Smeargle. This Arcanine is at minus two. Goes burn up into dose. Yeah. The the issue is that this is now no longer fire type. Do we see the kill on it still? And what is Smeargle doing? Smeargle is 150, so we're faster with dose. It should go for most damage, which is actually burn up again. Can you use burn up a second time or no? Can you only use burn up once? Like if a Pokemon's fire type, will burn up not work? This is actually extreme speed always or flare blitz. Could be flare blitz. Either way though. All right. Ah. <laughs> There we go, got it. We're fine. It went for Lair Blitz. <clears throat> cool. Now this thing only has a uh, Dark Void and stuff. How much does Dark Void do? How much damage does Dark Void do? We're not at risk to getting killed by Dark Void here yet, right? Oh, actually, Dark Void just puts you to sleep. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking bad dreams or whatever. What is this? Plus Spadef. Minus speed? Minus evasion. Interesting. All right, so um, we'll just waterfall and um, flinch. Oh, 
Oh my f***ing god, no, I forgot that Psywave can do that much. Oh my god, I totally forgot that it was- Oh my god. Oh, that's so dumb. That's so dumb, that's such a dumb way to lose Gyarados, dude. Oh no. Oh, I just spaced, like I could have switched. I, could, I, I, I just completely spaced. Psywave in here says 0%, I just wasn't looking at it. I was like, There's, it doesn't do damage. Oh my God. No, Psywave can do 1.5 times level. So it really high rolled. That's rough. I mean, you know, it, it, oh God. Oh my God, I can't, I can't believe that. I actually can't believe that. It did like 105. It was like high, high roll. It was like the highest, highest possible side wave it could have done. That's, that's insane. And waterfall is a 31% chance to Oko. And we could have flinched. I, I yes. can't believe that. That's, oh my God. But I mean, I, it was a throw. That's completely on me. Yeah, I just wasn't thinking because it's 0% in the calc. Oh my god, that's so dumb. I'm I'm so mad at myself. And I could have sucker punched there too. Yeah, no, the calc doesn't show the damage range at all. And that's like such a good mon to lose, dude. Yeah, I mean, I can say it's dumb in the calc, but it's, I mean, it's that it was a complete misplay. And honestly, it could have happened the turn before too. I, I just, I can't believe it. Like, like, what was I at? I was at like, I was over a hundred, right? There's no point in, in going over this, but the max roll was 1095. It's gonna have, that, that, that was gonna happen eventually, but like, is that a run defining? Is that like a run ending loss? Yeah, 105 HP. So what, six out of like a hundred rolls? I just, I can't believe that. And we low rolled waterfall and we, oh. Oh man, dude, I don't, that sucks. What a stupid way to lose a Pokemon. So we can do anywhere from one damage. One damage is what it could have done. Anywhere from one damage to 109. And I was at 105, so exactly five rolls killed me. Five out of 109 rolls. Plus low roll from Waterfall because it didn't kill, plus flinch chance. Five of 109 rolls. I mean, this is completely my fault, but I, I'm just I'm just genuinely stunned. Plus it had to go for Psy Wave over Dark Void. I just assumed it would Dark Wave. That was so dumb of me. Like I could have switched to Momo, been totally fine. So missing the Waterfall, kill plus all the other stuff and getting those rolls, it's a 2.5% chance. Zero to 194 or more, so maybe it was a little more likely, but still. At least we don't have to fight May anymore, right?